You know, originally uh, uh, we didn't realize who it was that we were that we were speaking to um, after um, you know quite a bit of a just kind of a street side interview mm -hmm. with her and, and uh, Mitchell and, and Barzi. We kind of started putting two and two together. Mm -hmm. um, you know, and as as we were speaking to them, that's when we realized who we had. <laughs> and we have a major story breaking at this hour. A 14-year-old girl kidnapped from her home by an intruder during the night in the Federal Heights area. Today here I am high atop a hill in Salt Lake City, Utah. Look at the mountains behind me. Absolutely gorgeous. This is a beautiful neighborhood. This is one of the best views I've ever seen of a city ever. You see downtown right there underneath the sun. I'll take a better shot of it in a moment. Up there are more mountains. Mountains, mountains, mountains all around where like behind me and also behind me is the former home of Elizabeth Smart and her family. Elizabeth Smart, that was a huge, huge story. I think everybody remembers the Elizabeth Smart story. Kidnapped from her home at 14 years old. The home is just up here. This is a story with a happy ending. It was a horrific, horrific event for Elizabeth Smart, but for everything she went through, like I said, it's a happy ending. In this video, I'm gonna take you to the former home of the Sparks, where she was kidnapped from, and take you to the location where she was found. Thankfully, finally, no grave to visit. Elizabeth Smart is alive, well, and hopefully thriving. Now, as I've said, surrounded by mountains, right? Beautiful, and when we heard the Elizabeth Smart story, we knew all about when, and after she was found, he, the man, person, couple who had abducted her took her off up into the mountains nobody knew that at the time and i always thought well, how close are these mountains like what's the mountain terrain like where did they stay in the mountains look it's hard to get a kind of exact indication for you like or let me show you what i mean like these mountains are huge huge I'm, they don't capture well on camera i find but my goodness, now I get it. Like, they just go up into the mountains and walk and walk and walk. Nobody would find you. Especially, I mean, I think they were probably looking in streets. They'd be looking everywhere for her. Unbelievable. So Elizabeth Smart, she was a 14-year-old Mormon girl living here in Salt Lake City. And it was June 5th, 2002. She had a nine-year-old sister, Mary Catherine, who slept in the same room as her. She awoke as a man crept into the window. She was frightened, so she pretended to sleep. She watched the intruder wake her sleeping sister and threatened her with a knife saying, you better be quiet and I won't hurt you. Moments later, both the intruder and Elizabeth were gone and were walking right up this hill toward the house. The nine-year-old Mary Catherine ran to seek help from her sleeping parents. The man led Elizabeth to his camp in the woods where his wife, Wanda, Wanda Burzy was her name? Wanda Barzy was her name. Ritually washed Elizabeth's feet, a biblical tradition. Then the kidnapper performed a ceremony where he said he married Elizabeth. He then proceeded to rape her. 
She was 14 years old. I let the best of you out there. We are doing everything we possibly can to help you. We love you. We want you to come home safely to us. The day after the kidnapping, the Smart family held a press conference pleading for whoever took the daughter to return her safely home. Soon after, 2,000 volunteers swept the area around the Smart home, even using dogs and aircraft to aid in the search. They uncovered nothing. It's a big city, and right over these hills and mountains, it is remote. Months passed, the police investigation uncovered hundreds of potential suspects. They eventually focused on a 26-year-old drifter. His name was Brett Edmonds. Suspicion intensified on Brett Edmonds until he was discovered in a West Virginia hospital after suffering an overdose. Then suspicion turned to a handyman that was previously hired by the Smarts. His name was Richard Ricci. And at the time he was in police custody for other reasons. He was also on parole for the attempted murder of a police officer. He was charged with felony burglary charges in the neighborhood of the Smart home. Despite pressure to confess from local police, Ricci refused until dying of a brain hemorrhage. Eventually all leads died with him. The Smart family, and not just the Smart, the people who lived in the home, their extended family, refused to let the lack of developments in the case silence media coverage. They started a website that served as a resource for the investigation. And they provided the media with home videos of Elizabeth as a child and as a teenager. Then, thankfully, this nine-year-old girl, her sister, her little sister, remembers something. She heard the kidnapper's voice in her head over and over again. And she said, I think I know who it is. I think it's Emmanuel. Now, Emmanuel was a gentleman who had done a single day's paid yard work for the Smarts, as well as spread word. He considers himself somewhat of a god, a prophet. So he spread word throughout the Salt Lake homeless population that the family was interested in hiring for odd jobs. When Mary Catherine told the police, she suddenly and without apparent cause remembered the kidnapper's voice as that of a man she had met briefly more than a year before. Police didn't believe her, but the Smart family publicly accused police of not following up on the lead. They then hired a sketch artist to draw Emmanuel's face, according to their memories, and distributed the drawing to all interested media. And America's Most Wanted, John Walsh, who's done so much good work, he stepped in. Emmanuel's family, recognized the drawing and reported the man's actual name, Brian David Mitchell. We're gonna go take a look at the house now because March 12th, 2003, nine months after the abduction, south of here in Sandy, Utah, Elizabeth Smart was discovered alive.
and up here is the back of the house. This would be where she was taken up this hill. You can see right through, it's very difficult to see. That's the back of the smart household right there. No real other view I can give you from the back. That's it. There's a trail down there. Wow. So nine months, it's dark now. This was a, uh, this wasn't a video I had actually, it was on my list to do in Salt Lake City, but I didn't think I was gonna have enough time because I'm not here for very long. So I did it in between other videos, going locations, all right, this is at the end of the night I've ended up here. And I wish I had more time to spend in Salt Lake City and to cover more of this story. But these are the two main locations. And right here, we're at 10200 South, South State Street. And this is where Elizabeth Smart miraculously was found nine months later right around here somewhere so a few people had noticed them walking along this street along south state street and alerted the authorities because the description of david mitchell brian david mitchell was out so it was march 12 2003 sandy utah right here so we're about 45 minutes from the house only 45 minutes from her home Somebody who had learned about the kidnapping on television spotted Brian Mitchell traveling with two people and contacted the police. When officers approached the trio for questioning, they discovered Mitchell, his wife Wanda, and disguised in a gray wig and veil, Elizabeth Smart. So it was a bus stop they were waiting at, and I'm not too sure. This is exactly 10 200 where the bus stop is. If it's been taken out, but it was right along this street. I cannot seem to find any bus stop along here. And I drove up and down a couple times. That's why it got even darker. But it's right around here. This is the exact location. Go down here, there's a little bit more light. So Mitchell and his wife Wanda were arrested. Their initial psychological assessment announced that Brian Mitchell was delusional and not competent to stand trial. But that ruling was then suspended by the court. When the trial began, Brian Mitchell acted out in court, shouting religious condemnations, scripture, and hymns. The judge ruled that the behavior suggested uh, psychosis. I want to give you every opportunity to um, interact with me. And so... Uh, the time is far spent, there is little remaining To publish glad tidings by sea and by land Then hasten ye heralds, go forward proclaiming He was placed in the care of Utah State Hospital for pathological paranoia. Here's where it gets interesting, in February of 2006, this part I'm going to have to read Completely. A bill passed the Utah legislature allowing for forcible medication of defendants to ensure competence to face trial. So to make them sane enough, I guess somewhat so to speak. Repent for the kingdom of heaven is at hand! Repent for the kingdom of heaven's at hand. In June, a, a judge approved forcible medication of Barzi. Wanda, so she could stand trial. A similar motion regarding Mitchell proved highly controversial, eventually reaching federal court on October 10, 2008. There was intense debate and rage as to whether Mitchell was genuinely delusional or merely highly manipulative, with expert witnesses testifying to both perspectives. I think he was faking it. I think he was just a big, disgusting pervert, and I think he was just using scripture, using Bible verses as a form of manipulation to further his horrific acts. That's what I think. He was just a disgusting, sadistic pervert. 
who was finally declared competent to stand trial. So years before, negotiations and a plea deal had reached an impasse, primarily on one point. Mitchell's defense, Brian Mitchell's defense, demanded that Elizabeth Smart not testify in court. Eight years after taking Elizabeth out of the window in view of her sister, Brian Mitchell stood trial for the crime. The trial lasted more, uh, more than four weeks, and Elizabeth Smart, she testified. One of the most bravest acts ever for her to face this man who did these horrible things to her. She testified. And he was there watching. And sometimes you think when, because she had to say some horrible, horrible things about what he did to her. And you think he probably enjoyed hearing that. Sick as he is. She recounted nine months of rape multiple times a day and being forced to watch pornographic films and drink alcohol to erode her resistance. What a... Yeah, that's all very biblical, Brian David Mitchell. So Elizabeth's testimony sealed her abductor's conviction. Brian Mitchell was sentenced to two life sentences in federal prison. He is never getting out. Thank you for watching everybody, I appreciate it. Brian Mitchell, I hope you are not doing too good. Elizabeth Smart, you are a hero. Thanks for watching everybody, I love you all, peace, out.